Sorry, that's all right. So, hi everyone, I'm Samantha Rogotham from the University of Sydney. National collaboration um, called the Australian Prevention Partnership. Researchers and policy makers to work together to tackle chronic disease. Um, so, unfortunately, I don't have any cats, pictures of koalas, birds, anything like that, but hopefully. Um, because I'll be talking about citizen science in public health. Um, so the work that I'm going to talk to you about, part of a broader programme of work that we've got going on, um, that's really all about engaging the public in the science of public health. Um, so engaging the public in thinking about how decisions are made in public health, the kind of evidence that's used and what that is, um, to really help to think about how we can implement better. Um, so today's talk is really going to focus on the aspects of that program of work. Um, so I'll just spend a couple of minutes talking about public health goals and challenges because I'm aware that we've got a really diverse um, audience in the room. Um, I'm also going to introduce you to an example project which is a pilot project we're running around workplace breastfeeding. Um, and I'm going to use that as a basis to talk about some of the opportunities for public health um, and citizen science um, and just highlight some questions, challenges and future directions. So that's quite a lot to do in 12 minutes and I could probably talk about all of those for 12 minutes each at least. I'll do my best. So public health is really um, about improving the health of populations. So it's about preventing illness, injury and disease at the whole population level um, and also about promoting equity and health. Um, so really the essence of it is keeping people healthy and out of hospital um, and it does that by focusing on upstream issues on preventing disease rather than just about curing it. Um, so when people think of health, they often think of health care, of medical systems, so of hospitals, of doctors, nurses, medical centres. Public health is so much more than that. Public health encompasses the places that we live, work and play um, and how they contribute to our health. So public health is really interested in all those environments that we engage in. So um, how where we work affects our health, how where we send our children to school affects their health. Um, and it intervenes at a whole load of places in that system to improve health um, and prevent disease. So it intervenes through healthy eating programs in school, physical activity exercises in the community, um, engaging with other agencies to make sure that we have safe spaces to walk and safe spaces to exercise, ensuring that we have a sustainable food system. So um, public health is huge um, and to be effective it needs lots of data and it needs engagement from the public. Um, so it's involved in health promotion, surveillance, um, monitoring. So um, what I really want to talk about is where the opportunities are for citizen science in really helping to strengthen public health um, and to get new data, new insights, and to drive change for the better in public health. Um, so this isn't new. So public health has a long, long history of public engagement and community engagement, often called community-based participatory research, a term you'll all probably be familiar with. There's also some fantastic examples of citizen science um, and health, so particularly infectious disease monitoring, environmental health, cancer research, and I've also been hearing other bits and pieces around health over the course of this conference. Um, so what we're talking about is really kind of mainstreaming that um, push for public health in citizen science and really expanding it around chronic disease prevention and thinking about citizen science in relation to public health policy. So it's really about driving forward a lot of this great work that's already been happening. Um, so the pilot project that I'd like to talk to you about is understanding, um, sorry, is using citizen science to monitor workplace support for breastfeeding. Um, so Breastfeeding is really important for health um, and despite that lots of women encounter barriers to breastfeeding um, and even those who successfully initiate breastfeeding often experience barriers down the line when they return to work. So if they're returning to work after say three months, four months, they often encounter barriers in continuing that breastfeeding once they return to work. Um, but there's lots of things we can do to support breastfeeding at work. Um, we can provide spaces where people can breastfeed at work. We can provide a workplace culture where they can take breaks to breastfeed or to bring their child into work to feed them. Um, 
and the Australian Breastfeeding Association, who we're working with on this project, has an accreditation scheme for workplace breastfeeding. What we don't know is how widely these kinds of policies are being implemented. We don't actually know what kind of support is available for women in workplaces, what they need, what they want in that environment. Um, and citizen science really provides a way of allowing us to do that. So we're working, as I say, with the Australian Breastfeeding Association and also with a local health district um, in southwest Sydney, their health promotion service, to pilot this study in one local health district to begin with. Um, so what we're trying to do is engage members of the public in monitoring workplace breastfeeding support. So we're asking people to take some pictures of the places in workplaces where they might breastfeed or where they might express milk or where a woman who wanted to breastfeed or express would do that. So they don't have to be people who are breastfeeding to take part in this project. Um, they'll then submit those photos and any comments and um, anything else they want to tell us about breastfeeding support at work via an online link um, and provide just some basic details about their workplace. So um, the postcode, the size of the workplace, the industry to allow us to look for patterns in the data um, around the types of support that's available. Um, There'll be a couple of things that happen with the data. So um, as the data comes in, we'll um, perform the analysis on the data to identify the key features of support that's available in the workplaces and what women are flagging up or people are flagging up. And we'll work really closely with our partners to do that, to look for the kinds of features, for example, that the ABA look for when they're accrediting workplaces. Um, we'll also share the photographs back with um, members of the public through our study website. We have to screen those before that happens so you know it's it's not quite the same as being able to share pictures of birds. We have got no idea what people are going to take pictures of. Um, so we have to be really careful and screen all of those photos first. So in this pilot phase, we won't have members of the public involved in the actual analysis. Um, but hopefully later on down the line, if we carry on with this project, they will be involved in analysis. But we'll still have to do that screening process to make sure that there's nothing inappropriate in the pictures. Also to make sure things like workplaces aren't identified by the name of the workplace and that there's no people in the pictures. Um, and then we'll be working with our partners to inform the decision making and the support. So to see, okay, what's coming out of these pictures and these surveys and what can we actually do to drive change in this area? Um, and that's also part of why we're displaying the photographs on the website. So there'll be the functionality in the website for people to be able to comment on those pictures and have the conversation around, okay, that person over there has got this in their workplace. I think that's something that I would like to get. How do I go about doing that? And by linking up with our partner agencies, we're enabling people to go to those partner agencies and get the kind of support to have conversations with their employers about that. So we're really looking at the whole spectrum from data collection and analysis, feedback and action. Um, so what do we hope to achieve by using citizen science in public health or harnessing citizen science for public health? So one thing, you know, as we've seen over the last few days, citizen science really allows us to access huge amounts of data, more data than we would be able to get with a small research team. But more than that, it allows us access to different types of data, data that we wouldn't necessarily be able to get. So I wouldn't necessarily be able to walk into a whole load of workplaces and assess what support they have. But people can do that. People can tell us what they've got there. They can also give us different perspectives on problems and solutions. So um, those of us working in public health have particular ideas about what we think is helpful or not helpful for health. That might not be the same as what community members think is helpful or not helpful for health. So by sending them out with a camera um, and asking them to tell us what they're seeing um, as being helpful or unhelpful, we can identify new ways of looking at problems and potentially identify new solutions for those problems. Um, by engaging the public, we can also start to shift the discourse around public health. Many of you will be familiar with the nanny state um, kind of criticism that often gets levelled at public health. So, you know, if we bring a sugar tax in or talk about bringing a sugar tax in, industry and the media often jump on public health and call us nanny state, call us interfering. By engaging the public in understanding why these changes are happening, collecting the data that actually leads to those changes, we can start to shift that discourse around why these solutions are implemented in the first place and really empower the public to ask for those solutions. Um, and that really leads on to the final kind of big benefit that we hope from this, which is really about driving the action and the implementation of effective solutions. So, for example, in chronic disease, we know 
what kinds of things we need to do to prevent chronic disease, right? A lot of those things don't get implemented. We don't have the power to push for some of the change that's needed. Some of you might also be familiar with the um, kind of often cited statistic that it takes 17 years from discovery um, of a solution through to implementation of that solution in practice. Um, so what we're hoping to do by engaging citizens is really kind of squash that timeline down and get things happening more quickly. Because if we're getting people to look at what's actually available on the ground, tell us what's missing and then push for that change, we can really speed up how quickly things happen in public health. Um, so that's the vision. So there's lots of questions, challenges and future directions, both in terms of our specific project and the kind of bigger idea of using science in public health. So I'll just highlight a few. So one is it's going to be really important to evaluate the impacts of engaging in citizen science for public health. So um, we don't know yet what kinds of changes this is going to lead to. Um, and we really need to be making sure that when we're setting up projects, we're evaluating what are those impacts. Is it changing the public discourse? Is it changing attitudes towards public health intervention? Is it having impact, positive impacts on public um, policy and program decisions on what gets implemented in practice? And are there potential for in unintended consequences? So we have to be really careful that we don't amplify existing disadvantages in communities. So with the breastfeeding program, if we only get um, people participating who have already got it pretty good um, in terms of their workplace support and we just make it better for them and we don't engage with those people who have actually got quite a crappy situation in terms of their workplace, then we're just going to make that gap wider rather than improving things for everyone. So we have to be really careful in the way that we engage with communities to make sure we're getting a diverse engagement. We also want to know who engages with citizen science in public health. Are they the same kind of people that are going out and engaging in bird watching and engaging in environmental activities? Are they these people who are diverse? Or are we getting completely different audiences altogether? Who is it that we're actually engaging? How do we tap into the things that motivate them? Um, and what are their expectations of citizen science? So we really need to do some um, looking into who our audiences are. We also need to build the capacity of public health researchers, of decision makers and of members of the public to engage in citizen science and public health. We have to make sure that people have got the skills to be able to set up these projects in ways that can lead to change and also to be able to act on the data that comes out of the project. So we need to be able to set those mechanisms up that if we get data for change, the change can happen. So we're trying to do that in our project by working with these key agencies and it's come out a number of times across the, con um, across the conference, the need to engage with these key stakeholders to make sure that they are ready to act on data. Um, and really what I want to achieve at this conference is the opportunity to really draw on all of the ex existing expertise that is here at the conference um, and beyond. So there's already this massive interest in citizen science, the infrastructure, the resources, the expertise. And I think there's real potential to integrate um, public health into that and to tap into some of that to really harness um, the power of citizen science to bring about change for public health. So I'd just like to thank, thank our investigators team, particularly Professor Penny Hoare, who's just in the audience here and whose kind of baby this was um, originally before I've kind of took over and showboated for it. Um, and also I'd like to acknowledge the Australian Prevention Partnership Centre who provide the funding for this work. Um, so thank you for listening. I don't know that we've got time for questions, but if not, please do get in touch um, via email or Twitter. I'd love to chat with any of you that have got an interest in this area.